Good day, and welcome back to TMAC FPV. Today I'm going through the complete setup of my TBS Crossfire system with my Jumper T16 transmitter. From downloading and installing TBS Agent X, which is sort of like OpenTX Companion for Crossfire, updating the firmware on the Crossfire module, installing it on my Jumper T16, connecting the Crossfire Nano receiver to my Quad's flight controller, to setting up both the module and the receiver in the Jumper T16, as well as the Crossfire Nano setup in Betaflight. Woohoo! That's a lot of stuff to cover. No worries though, because I've created an easy to follow step-by-step -step checklist on all of it, which you can download through link in the video description below. And you can find a hyperlinked table of contents there as well, in case you need to jump back and forth between sections of this video. You can't beat that! So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel. Your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing. Stop! All right, the first thing we need to do is go to the Team Black Sheep website and download the TBS Crossfire manual. Next, what I want to do is to make sure that I've got the latest firmware updates on the Crossfire module. To do that, we're going to go down to Firmware Upgrade, and it says that updates to the Crossfire is applied using TBS Agent software. This takes care of all the downloading of the latest firmware verification and upgrade process, which is outstanding. Uh, it tells you to go ahead and go to this website to do that. We're going to do that now at the TBS website. Scroll down. Download TBS Agent X. Windows version. Downloading over here. And it's done. I'm going to place it in my TBS folder. Extract it here. Run the application. So now we've got the TBS Agent X opened up. We've installed it. So now all we need to do is plug in our micro USB cable to the module. And let's do that now. Now according to the manual, all we need to do to update the firmware on the module is connect the module to the computer via USB with the TBS Agent X software open. And it'll automatically detect the module and take a look at the firmware and see if an update is available. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go to our TBS Agent X software program. With it opened, we'll go ahead and plug in the USB to the module. And a glowing light on the module, and it says the firmware is 242, which is here dated October 18th, 2018, and you can see that there's been one, two, three other versions subsequent to the one that's currently on our module. But let's go ahead and update the module with the latest version, 323. You can see the module is blinking green. And now we're starting the update. Writing the update. Verifying and complete. That was really simple. I'm impressed. So now we've got version 323 on our Crossfire Lite. Current version, 323. Outstanding. Okay, now in accordance with the manual, we're going to take this 3-pin connector and connect it to the RC input. And we're going to take the 6-pin connector and connect it to this port. like so. Then we align this socket with these pins on the back of the JR port and insert the module, like so. Next, we just want to connect our Crossfire Nano receiver to our flight controller. We're using the Mamba Mini Mark II flight controller. This is the top view of it. And to begin with, we just solder up the four wires, ground, five volts, channel one, and channel two. And then we connect it to a UART of our flight controller. On this side of the Mamba Mini Mark II, we have UART 6 and UART 3. I'm using UART 6 for something else. So I went ahead and used UART 3. And we connected our ground wire to ground, 5 volts to 5 volts. Channel 1 of our receiver is going to go to RX3. And channel 2 of our receiver is going to go to TX3. Here you can see the actual view of the connection from our nano receiver to 
our flight controller. Four wires to four pads. That's it. All right, now that we've got our Crossfire receiver connected to our quads flight controller, we're going to set up the Crossfire in the transmitter. And we're going to do that by going to the model setup menu. And from there, we're going to scroll up and make sure that our internal RF mode is off. And then under the external RF, we want to change the mode to crossfire. Press enter, and then we can go ahead and exit out. Get back to that menu. And now we're going to bind our crossfire receiver to the module and ensure the failsafe is set to cut. So with our crossfire receiver powered on, and you can see it blinking there, we're going to go to the radio setup menu. And page over to Tools, scroll down to Crossfire Configure, and press the Enter key. It recognizes our module as the Crossfire TX Lite, so we want to click on that. Okay, at this point we want to ensure the frequency is set properly for our region, where 915 megahertz is for ITU regions 2 and 3, which is basically North and South America, Asia, etc., and 868 megahertz is ITU region 1, which is for Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. So we can actually change this to 868 or 915. Since I'm in North America, I'm going to leave it at 915. Here's also where we want to take a look at the max power, and we can change that if we'd like with our region open. We can change it to higher values. I'm going to leave my region as open, and I'm going to leave my max power at 100 milliwatts, which is normally sufficient. At this point, we want to click on Bind. And it asks us if we want to update our micro receiver. It's blinking red now. Yes, we do. It's now gone to solid green, and we're updating the receiver. We do not want to interrupt this process. We're going to wait until it's complete. Now it's loading and the receiver is blinking. Binding. Now that binding's done, we're good to exit out of here. And under our Crossfire Configure menu, so now we should see our receiver, and we do. It's the Crossfire Nano RX, so we scroll down here and click on that. And it populates here. Now we want to select our desired mode, eight channels or 12. If we want to use link quality on channel 12, which is aux 8 and beta flight, we want to select 12 here. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to select 12. And we want to set our fail safe to cut. Then we want to scroll down here to our DST channel 12 and set that to LQ right here, which is for link quality. When we set that to LQ, we'll then go ahead and enable RSSI on AUX8, which is actually channel 12 in beta flight to coincide with this setting. Now we want to exit out of here. And we want to go to our telemetry page of our model setup, and we want to discover new sensors. So we're going to scroll up to discover new sensors, click on that, and now our sensors are populating, and we want to make sure that we've got RQLY as one of these sensors that's being populated. RQLY, which we do, it's at 100%, and this is our uplink link quality, which can be used for audible warnings from our transmitter of poor quality control signals. It's basically similar to RSSI. We can exit out of here. Unplug the quad. And our next step is to set it up in Betaflight. All right, now that we've got our receiver set up and bound to our Crossfire module, we just need to make sure it's set up in Betaflight properly. So with your quadcopter's props off, 
we connect it to Betaflight, and we go to the Ports tab. Now under the Ports tab, we connected our Crossfire Nano receiver to our flight controller using UART3. So under Serial RX column for UART3, we're going to toggle this on and hit Save and Reboot. And now our Serial RX is toggled on under UART3. From here, we go into our Configuration tab. Now we scroll down to our receiver section to make sure that our serial-based receiver is selected in that drop-down menu. And then under the Serial Receiver Provider, we select Crossfire or CRSF. And then we click Save and Reboot. Make sure that it's saved our inputs. From there, we can go to our Receiver tab and plug in the LiPo to our quadcopter and verify that our receiver is set up properly simply by moving our control sticks on our transmitter. I'm going to move the throttle stick and we'll watch this bar. Beautiful. Yaw. Pitch. And roll. All right, that tells me our Crossfire receiver is set up properly in Betaflight. But one last thing before we go, we want to go over here to our RSSI channel. And since we've set up LQ on our DTS channel 12 in our Crossfire receiver setup, channel 12 is actually aux 8. So we want to make sure that our RSSI channel is set up to aux 8, which is actually channel 12 because the first four channels are used for your control sticks. We set up RSSI channel to aux 8 since we set up LQ on our DTS channel in our Crossfire receiver setup. Then we hit save. And we also go over to our OSD. We want to make sure that our RSSI value is toggled on for our OSD display. And I've got that positioned over here, upper right hand corner of my OSD. Then click save. And our entire setup of Crossfire to include our module, and our receiver in both the transmitter and also the receiver setup in Betaflight is now complete. That didn't take long at all. Very simple. If you found this video useful, share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts on the Crossfire system in the comments section below. If you've been flying FPV for less than six months, make sure to check out my Fast Track FPV course description and curriculum on a page of my tmacfpv.com site. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friend.